Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tom Morgan Drum Studio. Um, in a previous video in the rudimental snare drum book, we went over the rudiment single, single stroke four, which used to be called the four stroke rough. And I mentioned in that video that it's very applicable to the drum set. And so I wanted to show you a couple of ways that I use it on the drum set. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I'm assuming that you've practiced it and got it to the place where you can play it pretty fast. So that it just becomes one motion rather than, you know, thinking of it as four different strokes. You're really just kind of throwing your hands down there and it gives you what you want. Assuming that you've gotten it to that place, um, let me just show you a couple things that are, I think, pretty obvious, but you might not have thought of them, or, or uh, maybe you've not thought of uh, using this rudiment on the drum set. But if you take that four-stroke rough or single-stroke four, and you just add a bass drum note after it. So, you know, it doesn't sound like a whole lot at that tempo, but if you start to speed it up, I think it starts to kind of fill out and sound more interesting. Okay, so really what I'm doing is I'm thinking of it as a triplet. Triplet beat. And then there's a eight or there's a rest, and then the bass drum comes in on the third triplet note. Although there's a space there. Okay, so if we want to use that as a fill um, in a jazz context. Just try playing some time and using it as a, a kind of a one measure fill. So I'll show you what I need at a, at a slower tempo. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Okay, now I'll play it some more and just gradually speed it up and you can see it as you get up to a medium tempo and a faster tempo, it starts to sound kind of, uh, kind of interesting and, and uh, compelling. One, two, a one, two, three. So as we get faster, um, it kind of fills in, there's less time, 
a space and it kind of fills in that space and it's a very easy easy thing to do you have to practice it with the hi-hat I think it's very important so you can keep the hi-hat going when you do it okay so that's one pretty simple application of the single stroke four another one uh, I'll give you give you one more uh, is to just spread it around the drums instead of playing it this way play it this way Okay, so um, if I play it faster, if I take the same speed here and do it the other way, I get a nice kind of fill that I, it's quite useful to me if I'm playing in a, in a big band, for example, and I want to set up um, a big chord on a downbeat, like on two. I might play this or something like it on one and then play the hit with the band on, on two. So it might sound like this. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Okay, so you can move that around and put it on different beats. If the band comes in on three, you can play it on two, so forth. If it comes in on one, you can play it on four. Now, if you want to kind of embellish that a little bit, you can add a little, a little embellishment by going, um, let's see. So what I do is I, I put a paradiddle in front of it. right bass. Okay, I'm still thinking triplets, diddle diddle da da but I've added some notes to kind of make it sound a little less um, thin and fatten it up so I have that extra little embellishment at the beginning. So now let's put it on um, a downbeat and as if we were setting up a downbeat on two, we'll put it on one uh, for the band. One, two, a one, two, three, four. A downbeat like that, be sure that you don't play the next downbeat, that you let that one go by. So if I'm going to play on two with the band, I play the fill on one, I hit with the band on two on their long sound, but then I wait to I let three go by and I come in on count four. Because if I come right back in, on three, then I haven't given that note on two time to sound long, and it sounds awkward. So I let it float for that count, and then I come in. Let me do it one more time. One, it's, the fill is going to be on one, and the, the the hit with the band is going to be on two. One, two, a one, two, three, four. One. you can see how awkward it would sound to just jump right back into the ride cymbal on count three. It would just sound, it would be awkward to play, but it, because it sounds weird, at least to my ears. So uh, this little lick, so you can, you can play that as a solo idea, like... You know, 
kind of a heniola pattern, which is a, you know, a great way to do it. Now, did I learn this out of a book? No, I did not. That last idea, I actually learned in high school listening to a Joe Morello album. He made an album. It's very hard to find. Uh, I think Ludwig uh, put it out. And uh, there was one lick on one of the tunes where he did something like this. And I remember how much I liked that. I just thought, that is a cool lick. And, and so I just listened to it and listened to it and I don't know, I practiced trying to do it and one day it just kind of came out and I didn't really even know how I was doing it. But eventually I kind of analyzed it and realized I was playing a paradiddle as a triplet in front of it. And that's how it all, you know, how I got it. And, you know, that's how you learn things. You learn by listening and thinking. Try things, you know, take a rudiment and just see what kind of ideas you can come up with. Try moving your hands around so you might play the same rudiment, but play it on two different drums or something. Those are the kinds of things that people who really have a big vocabulary of ideas, a big vocabulary of ideas, they get it by just spending some of their practice time just taking rudiments or taking sticking patterns and just thinking about how to uh, make them work on the drum set in different ways. And if you do that and back it up with a lot of listening to the great masters of the drums, you know, you, you will eventually start to put things together and you'll start to sound like those people uh, because you're doing the same kinds of things that they did when they were learning and practicing. All right, so hopefully this is helpful to you. If you like this video, please like it and please subscribe if you haven't because there are going to be more drum set videos as well as snare drum videos coming up. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.